Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to be able to open up God's Word for another day and see what He has to say. Just before we turn to our passage, I did just want to highlight a new initiative I've just begun. It's a new newsletter, which is going to be just basically every week a brief summary of a couple of different bits and bobs that I've found throughout my study for the week. One of the things that often happens as you study is you find these great little quotes, great little links, all sorts of different things, but they don't fit into what you're doing. They don't fit into the sermon preparation or the devotion or or anything else really. But you just find them to be great little gems. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some of those thoughts into a little newsletter and that'll go out at some stage every single week. So I'm going to be looking to start that up very shortly. There is a link in the description of this video where you can sign up. So I encourage you to go and sign up for that. Don't worry, I won't spam you with a million emails. Just one little brief email a week with a few thoughts for the week. But we're going to be turning through to the letter to the Romans once more, turning to Romans chapter 6. But before I read that, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word again for another day. We pray that as we turn to it, that you would help us to understand what you have to say, that you would use it to bless us and encourage our hearts. Help us not to be discouraged, but to see Jesus Christ and the glorious benefits that we have in the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 15 and reading through to the end of the chapter. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one to whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms, because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, at the end of the last devotion, the last verse in verse 14 was, Sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. If if we're set free from the law, does that mean we're totally free? meaning we're no longer a slave. And therefore, if we're not a slave, we can live how we want. That, that's the idea that Paul addresses in verse 15 when he says, What then are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Paul seeks to answer a similar question that he introduced in chapter 6 verse 1, but nuanced a bit differently. Back then... It was, are we to continue to sin so that grace may abound? In other words, if I sin more, more grace is provided, and that's a good thing. Whereas now it's, if I'm not under the law, if I've been set free from the law and saved by grace, then the law is not my master, and therefore aren't I free to live how I want? Or to put it another way, if I'm free from the law and from sin, Who am I free to? Am I free to myself? Or am I free to another master? Well, Paul Paul answers 
in a number of different ways. In verse 16, he says that there are two types of slaves and masters. Have a look with me. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? So if you present yourself as a slave to someone, that person's your master. And then he gives these two different types. He says, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. In other words, there's two types of slaves and two types of masters. There's the master sin, and there's the master righteousness. And you're either a slave to death and sin, or you're a slave to righteousness by obedience. And, and I do just want to pause and ask you, which, which would you describe yourself as? Would you describe yourself, looking at verse 16, as a slave of sin or a slave of righteousness? But Paul's argument continues in 17 and 18. He says, we, so now unpacking that reality of those two slaves and masters, he says, we who were slaves of sin have become slaves of righteousness. Have a look at 17 with me. But thanks be to God that you, he's writing to the Romans and he's writing to us, you who were, past tense, who were once slaves of sin, have become, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. Verse 18, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. So you were, verse 17, slaves of sin. That's what you used to be if you're a Christian. You were a slave to sin. But now, verse 18, you're a slave of righteousness. And what brought that transition? I wonder if you heard that in the center there. What took you from being a slave of sin to becoming a slave of righteousness? You have, he says in the second half of 17, become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. Now, does he mean by that, that by fulfilling the standards of teaching, you have made yourself a slave of righteousness? No, it's not what he means. He says, obedient from the heart, very important, obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. What was the standard of teaching that we were committed to? So he says, there's a standard teaching, teaching, you've been committed to it. How? By obedience of the heart. What, what do you think he might be thinking of? Well, he's been saying over and over again, hasn't he, that we're saved by faith. So it would logically make the most sense to understand that as a reference to belief, a reference to faith. In other words, by faith, by believing in the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation, by believing in that, you have been committed to the standard of teaching. So the way that you move from being a slave of sin to a slave of righteousness is not by obeying, it's not by works, but by faith. So the result of faith is that you move from being a slave of sin to a slave of righteousness. Now, in verse 19, he says he's using human terms. Words, he's using this imagery of slavery, which would have been really powerful for the Romans and for the early church who lived in a context full of slavery. Slavery is a very negative context for us, and understandably, slavery is a negative reality. But for them, who it was just so much a part of your culture, this had a real powerful way of illustrating his truth. And his truth is that slaves obey their masters. So in verse 19, he says, Just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness, leading to sanctification. So he says, you remember, you were a slave of sin. And so what did you do? You obeyed your master. You gave yourself over to do what your master told you. We were bound as slaves to the master sin. And so we dedicated our efforts to pursue sin and to follow our master. 
in the following of our master sin, we ended up creating more sin and doing more sin. But he says, now, since you've been transferred from slavery to sin to slavery to righteousness, well, now present yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Now, we know he's not talking about salvation because he puts that word sanctification there. You see, we, we remember that we're justified immediately and fully by faith. The moment of our salvation, we are declared righteous before God. But then there is the reality of what we call progressive sanctification. There is a progress from your point of salvation to your point of glorification in the presence of Christ, whereby you are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit is working in you to provide sanctification, to create sanctification within you, to make you holy, to make you more like Jesus Christ. And it's a progressive reality. So Paul is calling us to fulfill that which the Holy Spirit is doing within us. Much like when he says in other passages, things like, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work within you. The Holy Spirit is sanctifying you, so be a slave to righteousness, so that sanctification might be worked out in your life. Now, what's the implication of this? The implication of this, verse 20 to 23, is that slaves reap what they sow. Verse 20, when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So when you were a slave of sin, you didn't need to follow righteousness because it wasn't your master. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You were free from righteousness because your master was sin. And so you reaped what you sowed, death. But now, verse 22, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You were a slave of sin and so produced death, but now, 22, you're a slave of God and so produce eternal life. He's not saying that you create eternal life, but you live in accordance with the eternal life that you are receiving. Because ultimately, we receive our wages. The wages of sin is death. But the wages of God's free gift, not of your works, but of God's free gift, is eternal life. And so the question is, what are you sowing? Are you sowing sin, which leads to death? Or are you sowing by the free gift of God and his righteousness and thus receiving eternal life? You see, sometimes people love to stress the fact that we're free. People say, as Christians, we're free. We've been set free from death. We've been set free from sin. And I want to say amen to that. But we're not set free to ourselves. We must remember that. We're not set free to ourselves to live as we please. We've been set free to God. You see, there's no... There's no person, there's no person on the wor in the world who is not a slave of something. There are really just two categories of people. There are slaves of sin and there are slaves of Christ. And so the question for you and I is, firstly, which am I? Am I a slave of sin, which leads to death? Or, I'm, or am I a slave of Christ, which leads to righteousness? And, and, am I living in accordance with that? Look, if you're, if you're not saved, if you're not saved, then, then you should be producing sin because that's all you can produce because that's what your master calls you to do and obey. But if you're a slave of Christ, then are you producing, are you producing what is keeping, what is in keeping with Christ? You see, 
1 John reminds us that those who love God, those who love God, those who love Jesus, obey him. That's the natural fruit that comes from it. And so consider your life. Consider the fruit that is coming from you. What picture does it paint? If we were to look at what you, the fruit you produce, would it paint the picture of sin and death or of righteousness by the free gift of God? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for, for your love for us. We thank you for the gift of God's grace. We thank you that we are under a new master. And we pray that you would help us to live in accordance with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me for another devotion. I'll see you back here tomorrow. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss the first edition shortly. God bless.